Duda Parade. Bob Rondo is here to talk about uh, Monday Night Football tomorrow night. We're going to have a parade of people down to the Kingdom right. tomorrow night. Hawks go prime time. We have five games left in the Seahawks season, and a lot of people think tomorrow night's game with Denver will be the Hawks' best chance for that elusive second win here in 1992. Denver has a 7-4 record, but likely will have a rookie at quarterback, and the Broncos do tend to struggle on the road. I know that they uh, beat us up here last year. They got basically the same guys that they had when they beat us up here last year. The Broncos, who arrived in Seattle tonight, have many of the same guys, too. But they may well be without this guy. John Elway has a no. sore right arm and was in no mood for conversation tonight. John, can we talk to you? No. We had better luck with the young man who likely will start at quarterback for the Broncos tonight, the rookie from UCLA, Tommy Maddox. You hope that John can get well soon because that's the best thing for, for our team and best uh, thing for our playoff hopes. But uh, if I have to go in there and play, then I got to go in there and do a good job. In case you missed what John Elway said, that was a no. Coach Dan Reeves called Elway doubtful for the game. Even so, the Broncos are favored, and we'll have tomorrow night's game for you live at 6 right here on Channel 4. So there's no way of telling who will be the Monday best, but we do know who made the Sunday best for week number 13 in the NFL. And we'll start you off with the best meeting of former Cougar quarterbacks, Mark Rippon of the Redskins, Tim Rosenbaugh of the Cardinals. No question who got the best of it. Rippon passed for three touchdowns. Rosenbaugh threw four interceptions. This game also produced the best fumble return. Washington's Wilbur Marshall picking up the ball, pushing off the tacklers, and ultimately lateraling to teammate Alvoid Mays. The Redskins winning 41-3. Best hitting? How about the Browns bopping the Bears? Stephen Moore on Neil Anderson, Harlan Barnett on Dennis Gentry. The Browns won 27-14. What's the old saying about the best offense? Yes, it is the best defense, as the Saints proved with two defensive touchdowns in a 24-13 win over Dan Marino and the Dolphins. Best touchdown receiver in NFL history? Jerry Rice shares that label with Steve Largent. Rice catching number 100 today as the Niners beat the Eagles 20-14. And most folks gave the Colts, at best, only a prayer of beating the Bills. Sometimes prayers are answered. And Dean Biasucci's field goal in overtime gave the Colts a 16-13 win for the best upset of Sunday number 13. Other scores now. The Chargers continue to roll with an easy win over the Raiders tonight. Kansas City stays atop the AFC West by beating the Jets. Central Division leader Pittsburgh with another win. Atlanta blanked the Patriots today. Minnesota moves closer to a playoff spot by beating the Rams. Green Bay goes to 6-6 six six with a win over Tampa Bay. In Toronto, Canada's version of the Super Bowl, the Grey Cup. And Calgary's Doug Flutie had a huge night, passing for 480 yards and two touchdowns against Winnipeg. The Stampeders trampling the Blue Bombers 24-10 and hoisting the cup as Canadian Football League champions. Kevin Mitchell didn't quite work out as planned as the Mariners' left fielder, so the M's went back to Mitchell's old team and found another one today. Meet Seattle's new left fielder, or is that uh, left felder? His name is Mike Felder, and he played in San Francisco the past two seasons before making himself available as a free agent. And the Mariners, saying Felder will be their leadoff hitter, signed him to a two-year contract today worth $1.7 million. Felder's a switch hitter. His 286 batting average with the Giants last season was the highest of his career. Prior to his two years in San Francisco, he spent six years in the Milwaukee organization. Now, good thing it was only an exhibition game. The Husky women's basketball team losing its season opener to a touring team from Australia, 74-68 this afternoon. Washington shot the ball well in the first half and led by three. Laura Moore powering to the basket for two of her team-high 18 points. Washington did not shoot the ball well in the second half. 18% to be exact, including four straight misses in this sequence. The Huskies losing 74-68. And in the annual Skins game of golf, with a foursome, foursome, that is, of big names, Payne Stewart came away the big winner for the second straight year. Not that Fred Couples had a bad weekend. This 35-foot eagle putt gave Couples total winnings of $210,000 for the two-day event. Payne Stewart, however, went him 10000 better, thanks to this little putt on the first hole of a playoff with carryovers 
That putt was worth $120,000. Stewart finishing with $220,000 for a couple of sunny days in the California desert. Couples was next. Greg Norman did reasonably well. Tom Kite came up empty. Too bad for Tom. Nice vacation for all those guys. Mm -hmm. huh? Maybe Payne can buy some new clothes now. Yeah, that's a uh, vacation with pay. <laughs> okay. Rick Meter joins us in sports. A lot of excited football players and high school football players tonight, huh? Especially. Big day down at the Kingdom, John. Now, for high school football teams, this is a day of dreams. Their dreams of playing for the state championship in the King Bowl come true. And even if they don't win that game, they'll never forget this day. No one can ever take that away. It all began with a B8 game at 9.30 this morning. A couple of teams from Eastern Washington. Tico Oaksdale in white uniforms a scored on the third play of the game. Quarterback Cal Kreider threw for three touchdowns against Pateros. It was 20 to nothing at halftime, but the Billy Goats, that's Pateros, scored twice in the third quarter. That's Derek McCoy on the carry. But just when it looked like Pateros might have a chance, Casey Lawson picked off a pass for Tico Oaksdale. He took it 53 yards for a touchdown. And the Nighthawks went on to win the eight-man championship, 42-26 over Pateros, which lost the title game for the second straight year. Give me liberty in the B-11 game. The Lancers took the lead on Wakayakum with this touchdown pass from Jeff T. to Jim Haas in the first quarter. But the play of the game and the play of the day so far came early in the second period. Liberty's Jared Jeske took a handoff at his own five-yard line. He was off and running all the way to the end zone. Liberty from a spangle near Spokane wins the B-11 championship 27-0 over Wakayakum, which is located in Kathlamet down in southwest Washington. And how's this for a great comeback in the Class A game? Top-ranked Eatonville trailing Zilla 23-0 in the second half. But the Cruisers come back to win. Bobby Luck hits Ben Zerlo with a 43-yard touchdown pass in the fourth quarter. Eatonville scored three times in the final period to win it. Joe Dorn on the carry for what proved to be the winning touchdown. The Cruisers beat the Leopards 26-23 for the Class A championship. Double-A game underway at the Kingdom. O'Day of Seattle in a rematch with Prosser. The Mustangs have a 6-0 lead at halftime thanks to two field goals. O'Day considered by many uh, the best football team in the state. It will be Puyallup and Newport in the AAA championship game later tonight. Uh, two teams of overachievers who have a chance to realize their dreams. And how do they get ready for the game? Well, those gnarly guys at Newport go swimming. Ritual, we We're psycho! <laughs> well, not swimming exactly, but they do take a quick dip in the lake. It's a tradition that began last season, resumed in fall practice, and continues right up to the King Bowl. But on a 40-degree day in December, you have to question their sanity. What's up? Well, we got, we got McAtee here as a lifeguard, just in case. Well, the minute you hit the water, the game's the farthest thing from your mind. And so the only thing you're thinking is, I got to get out of the water and I got to warm up. And so it takes your mind off it for a while and it makes you, makes you laugh and it makes everybody feel a lot better. And the season-long ritual had a new twist today. They set fire to a t-shirt that commemorated the 1990 season when the Knights won every game except the King Bowl. Now, isn't that a hand-warming story? Well, I don't know what the temperature of the water was today, but uh, that, uh, that was great back in August when they were doing two-a-day practices. These guys but, are nuts. Uh, nah, well, but they've won every week, so they've got to do it. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. We'll I don't see. know what Puyallup does. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you a little later.